life. Let's go. So, yeah. um, hello, everybody watching. Um, welcome back to the second episode of 2020 The Class of Quarantine. I'm your host, Ashley Wallace, and these are my guests, uh, John Lovett and Josh Silva. Um, how are you guys doing? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> just, just PG. Just PG. Okay. Uh, so, would each of you like to kind of introduce yourselves, what you've done in high school a little bit? John can go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hi, uh, my name is John Lovett. Um, I'm a senior or graduating senior at Amesbury High School. Everything's kind of a mess right now. Um, and yeah, I'm going to University of Michigan for college after this, uh, hopefully. And yeah, yeah, that's basically it. I work at the Moolah's Market Basket, um, although not as much recently, but I do have a lot of stories to tell, hopefully. And yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm Josh Silva. I'm also a graduating senior at Amesbury High School. Um, I'm going to the University of Massachusetts at Amherst for college. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I also work at um, Hodges 2 in Salisbury, and I am kind of on a hiatus from working at Market Basket right now. All right. Um, so did you guys want to like, explain your majors, too? I know like it's something very minor, but yeah, sure. Um, so I'm planning on going into psychology and hopefully with a pre-med concentration so that I can go into uh, medical school and become a psychiatrist. Um, and psychology is just huge for me. Um, I did a capstone project this year with it, and I would really love to get a lot more into it. Um, I'm going for computer engineering at the College of Engineering. Um, it's kind of a mix between computer science and electrical engineering, so you get kind of the best of both worlds scenario. All right, awesome. Um, so today, uh, Josh and John are here to talk about what it's like working at an essential workplace or an essential business during this whole crisis. Um, so whether that be supermarkets or Hodgies, which is an ice cream place if you aren't familiar. Um, so would each of you like to go into like a typical day of work, you know, what that might be like a little bit? Um, if the world wasn't on fire, um, a typical day of work would be, I come in like five minutes early to my shift, uh, punch in. Um, I work in the produce department at my market basket and, you know, normal days is just stocking things until there's nothing left to be stocked, um, clean, like cleaning, uh, maintenance of the department, um, you know, basic stuff, nothing, nothing super crazy or thought intensive. But um, as far as recently, um, I haven't been working. Uh, the past month or so, but I did work at the beginning of this whole uh, pandemic, which was pretty interesting, um, to say the least. Uh, things got a lot more busy, and I've never gotten to the point at work where there was kind of nothing to do. Like, we, like that was the first time where we really ran out of everything in the back room, which was just incredible. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd assume like running out of anything, especially at like a supermarket would be super like, I don't know, I feel like I would be super creeped out even working there, like setting foot in. It feel like almost like forbidden. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, an, an empty cooler is the most uh, desolate place ever. It's just it's just like this isn't right. It's wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as far as my experience at Market Basket first. Um, I work at the front end, so I'm like cashiering or bagging or doing carts and stuff. Um, you definitely see a general decline in patience from people. Um, and a lot of people are asking like, so uh, when are you guys getting toilet paper or stuff back, at least in the beginning, because I'm not working right now either there. Um, but yeah, so just in general, uh, lack of patience from people has been noticeable. And then as far as Hodges goes, um, we go in, we have to wear masks and we try to keep our distance, although it can get kind of crowded at times because um, everyone has to kind of adapt to a new workflow. Um, but yeah, we just try our best to get our ice creams out and keep people happy, although it's kind of hard sometimes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd assume customer service right now might be like super difficult, especially for both like staff and cu like customers just because it's like a lack of connection and also like a lack of a little bit of a lack of communication just because of like the online stuff i know hodges is doing online orders so it might get confusing you know so on and so forth yeah 
it's kind of difficult too because the Hajis in Amesbury is still doing um, walk up orders, but Hajis 2 is only doing online and phone orders. So every once in a while you get someone walk up to the window and try to order and then it's like, sorry, we're only doing, um, we're only doing orders over the phone or online. And then they kind of get annoyed and I feel bad, but it's like, what's safest for everyone. Yeah, I know. I feel like it might be confusing, but it's, I know there's also like a banner. So hopefully they'll, they'll read yeah. that when they yeah. try to walk up to the window. People do not read the banner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, so let's get into it a little bit. Um, so I know we've just been talking about this. Uh, how has customer service been altered and how have you still been able to maintain that connection with customers, even though there's like online ordering or a glass shield in front of one of, you know, the, I think, what are those, the front registered things? I yeah. <laughs> um, so as far as my end goes, so produce department customer service is I don't want to say it's impersonal, but it's incredibly impersonal. Um, like the, obviously there's like the 10 foot rule, which is not, it has nothing to do with the pandemic stuff. It's like, if you see someone within 10 feet of you, you ask if they need help with anything. And you know, like that's kind of still happening. Um, I, I went there yesterday just to like, you know, see how things are with uh, my department and all that. Um, and it, it's very interesting. They have actually the aisles set up such that like some are like one way um, and stuff like that. And that's just like really uncomfortable, I feel for like everyone. Um, and like, I, I noticed a lot, a lot of the workers anyway, um, that I saw were very much so more focused on their work in their own little area and not really doing that whole 10 foot rule, um, checking on customers and make sure that everything's uh, kosher because I think, and also like all the shelves are still like kind of blown out, which is like incredible to see. Um, and so I feel like right now it's not quite panic mode anymore but it's more like real intense focus from a lot of these uh employees where that customer service is kind of taking a little bit of a hit um but at the very least they're doing the basics and i haven't really seen anyone be outright rude it's just accommodating everyone's needs in this time is a little bit more difficult i'd say there's not that level of uh, uh personalization i know my manager um, my my uh, produce manager is like one of the most like wonderful people. He he tries to get uh, like personally acquainted with almost all his customers that he sees, and now he can't really pull that anymore. And it's 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 kind of sad to see. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I went to Market Basket the other day, and I did see that like aisle thing. So I was trying to get like something to bake, and I had to like loop around because the aisle was facing the wrong way. And I know they also have like um, somebody directing people into each line so that the um, workers don't get so overwhelmed because there's so many people. Mm -hmm. And um, Josh, how is it a little bit at Hodges? Um, So it's really difficult to build like a relationship with the customers when you're not talking to them face to face. Um, it's almost completely impersonal when doing it online like besides leaving a little note here or there um and when doing it over the phone even though you're having a conversation with them it's not you're more of the ordering system to them um so i i personally try to kind of joke around on the phone and keep it lighthearted and stuff because it's a tough time for everyone but it's definitely more difficult than doing it face to face Definitely, yeah. And I mean, especially not being able to, like you said, see them face to face while they're ordering. It's not um, as personal, you said. And I know mm -hmm. um, it's a very tip based um, kind of workplace. How does that been affected mm -hmm. since you started? Um, well, at Haji's 2, what we do usually is we each have our own tip cups and then we just take home whatever we make at the end of the night. Um, but for online and phone orders, we've had to pool them together and then split them at the end of the night. But it seems to have been working out fine. So that's good. I'm glad you guys are still getting tips because I know yeah. personally, if I was like getting tips, I would be a little bit yeah. upset. But <laughs> yeah. All right. So this kind of branches off from that question and a little bit. I know Josh went into this already, but how have customers reacted? Do you think has it been more positive or negative? How have customers been a little bit? More understanding to the whole process or <laughs> all right so so I still remember the first day everything kind of broke loose Ashley this was after like the the last day that we had that half day remember mm -hmm. so 
that the, the day after is a Friday morning and my mother had wanted me to come in to just get in like some uh, milk or whatever, like just very basic, like three things maybe. And I go in and it's like the world's on fire. And it, there's just incredible volumes of people. It's ridiculous. And people are starting to get a little nasty with each other. Um, and I, I wasn't even like working at that time. I was just a customer walking through and I went to see my manager. I was like, Hey, like, do you want me to help out or anything? He's like, please. Yes. Um, so I, I dropped in a few hours in just like normal, uh, like human clothes and not just like work clothes, which is kind of nice. But, um, a lot of the customers, I, I was also wearing a mask at the time. I was like, right in the beginning, I was like, I'm not really going to take any risks. And I just know that also if, if I were to be sick, um, at least I wouldn't be getting everyone else sick by keeping a mask on. Um, so when I was wearing that mask, some of the customers were getting a little uh, antsy looking at me, or at least like this was in the very beginning of it. And they were like, I remember someone kind of half yelled at me, which was very uncomfortable. Um, I've never been yelled at by a customer before for something that I was just wearing, um, maybe for other things, but not this. And it, it was very... It was off-putting. He was like, are you trying to make a statement or something? It's like, no, like there's no statement to be made. I'm just trying to keep you guys and myself safe. Like I'm literally doing my job when I wasn't even scheduled to do my job. Um, as time has passed, I'd say it's become more mixed. I feel like some people see it as like a necessary, not evil, but like a necessary, well, this kind of sucks, you know, but um, others have definitely still been really negative about it. Um, I know some customers are actually not upset, upset at the uh, employees, but like uh, management, as far as like getting us the proper uh, protective equipment early on, um, the plexiglass uh, shields weren't implemented very early. They took a while to get in. Um, and so that, that was pretty interesting to see uh, that dynamic with the customers. Um, and it really just came down to like their personal understanding of this pandemic. Definitely. Yeah. I remember, I think you were one of the first people I had seen wear masks. So like for that initial reaction to be so like explosive is very interesting now that, you know, masks are required. So it's like mm -hmm. definitely interesting. Um, I, I agree with John that it's gotten more mixed over time. Um, I originally took a hiatus from Market Basket because because it was taking so long for them to bring in all the precautions. Um, and then I just haven't felt comfortable going back since then, but hopefully it'll start levying out soon. Um, as far as Haji's goes, it's probably like 75, 25, like one out of every four people or something will be confused or annoyed. It's like, why do we have to wear all these masks and take all these precautions? Why can't I just order my ice cream at the window? Like we normally do. Um, and there's just kind of a disconnect in understanding there. Yeah, definitely. And um, I mean, I would assume, you know, some customers, especially those who aren't really totally invested with, um, you know, network and, you know, new kind of internet and stuff like that, they might be a little bit more confused because they're so used to what they've grown up with and what they've lived by for the past however many years, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so this one, I think we've also touched upon a little bit, but I think elaborating on it might be a little helpful. Um, how has customer turnout changed and how has that kind of affected your workload? Okay. Um, so once again, I haven't worked in a month, but I have been keeping in contact with my manager, actually just both of us checking on each other, really, um, which is actually kind of nice, but obviously initially like crazy, like hordes of people, like that's nowhere near an exaggeration. The fact that lines wrapped all the way from the end of a checkout, all the way across the ice cream, all the way down to produce, all the way down to like the deli, the opposite side of the store. Like that was just insane. It was like that for maybe a week or two, like almost every single day, it was ridiculous. And now that they have like restrict restrictions in place as far as like how many people are allowed in a supermarket at one time, um, as my manager described it, it's like every day is a Saturday. Now for the un uninitiated, Saturdays at Market Basket tend to be kind of a consistent burn all day. There might be a rush here or there, but otherwise it's just, you're always having people kind of just coming in and coming out, coming in and coming out. So you constantly have to keep the floor um, man uh, 
maintained. Um, and especially since people are uh, consistently buying and buying and buying and buying, what's happening is um, produce trucks, you only get once a day. Um, and what's happening is basically everything from the truck is basically going straight to the floor um, just to burn. Like it's, it's incredible. Um, the, the amounts of product that's being moved now, like I think as far as numbers go in, in terms of like how much the produce department is doing sales wise, we're doing like maybe two or three fold compared to what we would have done under normal circumstances, which is very interesting. And especially with that, I know there's a limitation on some cleaning products and toilet paper and all that. Um, even for that to be like going by so fast with that limitation is probably very, uh, you know. Yeah, it's it's concerning. It's scary to see really like seeing people. Um, it, it's always sad to see actually. I remember I saw um, an older gentleman probably in his like early 70s maybe. And he, he was really just buying like two tubes of like Lysol disinfectant wipes or whatever. And I felt really bad when the the cashier had to tell him, sorry, you can only take one. And it's kind of like, like, ah, like this poor guy. Mm -hmm. But th th those are the rules. And I, I, I kind of get that, like, you know, everyone needs to have access to these things to some extent. Yeah, definitely. And uh, with Josh, um, I know you probably have a similar experience with the uh, market basket, but how has it been with Hodges? Um, so I wouldn't say we really have more, more of a flow than we usually do, um, but it builds up a lot faster than it usually does because a lot of the workers, this is all new to us um, and it's kind of hard to get used to the new system. So sometimes we'll go from like, having no orders and just kind of chilling out for 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden we'll have like five orders come in. And then while we're working on those five, another 10 come in and it just kind of builds up very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we're really getting too many more customers. It's just, it builds up a lot faster. So instead of like a constant burn, it's just like, like pack, like points of impact kind of. Yes and no. I feel like once that first hit kind of comes in, then it, just stays steady mm -hmm. so like they'll have like a hiatus and then it'll just be like go 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 yeah got it all right um so how have the basic functions of your establishment been altered so meaning like you have different opening and closing procedures and this is for josh um how is has the menu changed at all like do you have limitations in that menu no not really <laughs> no <laughs> we uh we still try to do specials. Um, we've been pretty consistent with doing that. The menu hasn't really changed at all. Um, but as far as workflow goes, like we have to wear masks now and um, we, outside trash has kind of changed and we don't have to clean off the tables outside because um, obviously there's no one to sit in them. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of very small things. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's good to know that that hasn't changed because I know um, at least Dairy Queen, I've heard, has like a super limited menu now. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, good. there's still a variety. <laughs> we still make everything. It's just to go. Or we can't do cones, I guess, but we can oh. put them in the bag to go. Mm -hmm. oh, and for uh, John, how have those like procedures changed since you've been working? Oh, yeah. So a lot. There's been a lot more emphasis on cleanliness and hand washing. Um, actually that kind of started right at the beginning, like right around that first day of everything kind of going up in flames. I keep on saying that, um, they basically, um, we got like, uh, letters in or emails in whatever, uh, from the like corporate produce department heads, um, basically giving us procedure on like how to interact with customers, how to interact with each other as employees, um, hand, when to wash your hands. I think it was like every like 15 minutes or so. And like, if you ever like touch your face at all, like wash your hands. Um, and there's a lot more, um, th there's a lot less kind of loafing around, I guess, which like kind of happened when it was more relaxed and you didn't have to worry about the floor uh, being constantly emptied and you having to refill it. So there, there's a lot uh, more of that. I remember at the beginning, they tried doing senior hours. Um, I, don't, I don't know if they're still doing that. I haven't really been keeping up to date, but definitely a change in hours. Uh, a change of closing hours also happened to try to limit the amount of things that we lose in a day um, and making sure that we can actually keep the floor filled just across all departments. Um, as far as staff working at the same time goes, 
I'm not really certain. I know my produce department was already pretty small to begin with. Um, and so it wouldn't be too much of an issue. Like having like five people on, like even before this whole thing would be a lot of people. So um, right now having five people wouldn't be too crazy to think about, um, but yeah. Still overwhelming, even though it's like probably typical. And um, this goes for both of you again, have there been any like cleaning procedures that have changed? I know, you know, the washing your hands, but maybe wiping down surfaces and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so like we have, uh, when we put all the product out, we put it on like these flat carts and uh, those have to be like wiped down like a lot. The handles and the actual surface that the boxes of stuff rest upon, those have to be cleaned out. Um, the cooler gets cleaned fairly regularly, regularly. Um, although there's not really much place for contamination other than on the actual physical boxes if someone were to be sick. Um, I know that the hand jacks have been wiped down and um, yeah, there, there's a much bigger influence, uh, yeah, influence on as far as like you actually need to wipe down the surfaces that you come to contact the most with, um, which, which is nice to see. You know, I feel like that kind of cleanliness should have already been a super standard, but at least they're starting now. Exactly. Yeah. Um, definitely good to know that they're like starting to implement that, even if it was, you know, probably a good thing to have beforehand. Um, and for Josh, how has that changed at Hologies? Josh? Oh no. <laughs> I think his image is frozen on my side. Yeah, he looks a little bit frozen on mine as well. Oh. Um, yeah, so that'd be really I, interesting to know. Yeah. Hmm. Um, we can come back to that question once we figure out what's going on with Josh. <laughs> but we'll move on to the next question for now. Um, so for John, um, how has your like how have your personal hours or workload changed? I know you had um, overnight shifts before. So would you want to explain a little bit into uh, how those worked? Yeah, so overnight shifts um, are interesting. I'll say that. Um, so basically the way it works is um, you have to be over 18. Obviously, you can't really be super unattended that late. Um, and so you go in and there's a few other people doing overnight shifts, like the um, grocery department heads or not department, just grocery department um, plus one manager. Usually they all stock the floor at night and um, produce just uh, there was only one person and that would be me. Um, and I only did one overnight because I realized that should be my last overnight. Um, the general flow of that was basically, I had to clean down like everything in the back room, like um, my manager's desk, um, all the interiors of that, um, all the flat cards I wiped down like religiously. Um, and from there, um, I had to clean out the displays I was filling. Uh, well, first like remove all the product, wipe down the displays, put the things back up and just keep going from there. And it, it was a very lonely workflow, I'd say. Um, it, it was, th they get kind of difficult because it's really nice to be able to like kind of give uh, people tasks that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do at that time. Mm -hmm. And then like kind of, as soon as like one o'clock, two o'clock kind of hits, you're kind of just like, I really don't want to go on anymore from here. Um, but the fact that they did offer overnight shifts to me, because um, I, I am an asthmatic. Um, so if I were to actually work during the day and if I got sick, that wouldn't really be great for me. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would assume that would be super lonely, especially working um, all alone. And I mean, did you ever hit like a slump at any point in that shift? <laughs> so there's one moment that happened that almost uh, brought me to tears. Um, so I was out on the floor, this is around like 12 30, one o'clock and, uh, we have a stack of yams that kind of just decided that it didn't want to be a stack anymore and instead <laughs> became a giant puddle of yams and they all fell over, um, at around midnight. And that's kind of when the slump started. Cause I had to pick up every single yam that fell down, get them all back in their boxes and then get them back stacked up. Um, and I also had to do a bunch of price change stuff. Um, and that just like doing that was just kind of, uh, it's just a lot of small details. Got to make sure you get perfectly right. Cause if you have like a cucumber display in one spot and one in another, and they have different prices, people freak out about that, you know, rightly so. I mean, you wouldn't want to have to deal with that. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, all that tedious stuff, especially so early or late in the morning, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I actually, so here's a funny thing. So I came in at 6.30 at night. Uh, that's when I was told to come in. And I was originally scheduled till five in the morning. Um, and then five in the morning comes, manager comes in and then we talk a little bit and he's like, hey, can you actually help me out for like a little bit more? And of course I can't say no. Um, and so I do for like another hour and a half. So I work like a 12 hour shift straight and the, the break was weird. Taking a break during that was very weird also. Um, like when no one else is there to supervise to make sure that you actually, you know, get going after that. That's kind of when the slump also started hitting a little bit. But yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because once you stop, it's hard to start again. Exactly. <laughs> so um, kind of jumping off that, I know obviously we're both still in school. Um, and with those overnight shifts, how did you still balance like schoolwork? Did it ever affect that? Um, oh god yeah I actually I did my calc homework during that overnight shift oh my god. and that was actually the worst I ever did on a calc homework there were 19 parts to it I got one correct <laughs> and it was a fluke that I got it correct too I, I did I did like the wrong thing but got to the right answer type deal mm -hmm. um and yeah like that was kind of when I realized I really can't keep up with this like workflow and still do school especially like if I continue doing overnights, like, let's say I just did it on weekends. Well, there goes my weekends. Mm -hmm. And like, I'd have to keep up with that uh, workflow all over again. And it's just like changing my sleep schedule just for like a night or two of work. Just, it didn't really seem to make too much sense for me to do and to make sure that I keep myself up in my academic studies. Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> so. my, okay, fun, fun fact. Uh, Zoom drains your phone battery. So if. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so, uh, welcome back. Um, we were a little, I asked you a question and she dropped. So, a little um, confusing, but I'm glad you're back. Um, I was just asking, um, what was I asking? Oh, how? Yeah, have cleaning. Cleaning, the, how have the cleaning regulations changed? Uh, um, oh, geez. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so we have to wash our hands. Um, that's a big one. Um, we have to wipe down the counter with like, um, kind of like a Windex kind of thing. But other than that, it's not much has really changed because we were already pretty clean for the most part before so. awesome yeah and I also asked John um how has your personal shift schedule or workload changed I know you went into a little bit how you know you'd get a little overwhelmed but mm -hmm. um so as far as like my shifts and how much I'm scheduled it's still pretty much the same as it was uh before the world was on fire as John would say <laughs> um <laughs> So yeah, I'll, st I'll still work like 25, 30 hours a week or something like that. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And I was also um, asking Josh, has this affect, John, sorry, um, has this affected your like uh, work in school at all? He was kind of talking about how it was very hard to balance both the overnight shifts he was using or taking and the workload that he was getting from school. So has that um, been altered at all? Uh, he's, John's a lot crazier than I am in that regard in terms of taking on work um I it's still been pretty consistent like I've still had enough time to finish all my school work um English has been tough but other than that yeah well that's good I'm uh, glad you can find a way to balance especially with the senior research going on I know that's a big mm -hmm. thing for English classes so yeah <laughs> all right so um after working a shift, what kind of measures would you take to keep your family safe as well as yourselves? All right, so like as soon as I, I'd get home, um, I'd just go straight to the bathroom, wash my hands just like until my fingers are like numb with soap and water. And then um, just kind of avoid contact with my family for a little bit, like, like make sure the mask, if I had a cloth mask, I'd wash that um, and then dry it and then um from there I'd also I'd also shower uh, right after work make sure I didn't have any of that clothing on me um and yeah otherwise like th there wasn't too too much I could have done more yeah. than that 
Yeah, definitely. And Joshua, what measures do you take? Um, wow, really putting me on the spot here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I just try to wash my hands, like keep myself as clean as possible. I don't really, I mean, I try to wear a mask when it's appropriate. Like if we're, um, like if I just come in the house, sometimes I'll come in with a mask before I go upstairs to clean up or whatever. Um, but other than that, nothing's really changed too far in my household. Yeah, I mean, as long as, you know, you feel that you're safe and clean enough, then yeah. it's perfectly fine. Um, so what plans do you both have in order to get back to your previous workload and how long or difficult do you think that road will be? All right, so I talked to my manager yesterday, actually, when I went to Market Basket, and I was like, all right, like when things kind of clear up a bit, I'll definitely come back. It's just that I can't really go to Michigan as like in an ICU, you know, like in an mm -hmm. ICU type situation. So it's like my, right now my goals really aren't to work as much as it is to make sure I get to college all right and I can really get going on there. But if, if things do clear up this summer and like if the infection rate drops dramatically in Massachusetts and in Essex County, um, then I'll probably consider going back um, a lot more than I have right now. But as it currently stands, um, it, for the foreseeable future, I'm not going back. And uh, that's, oh, sorry. Oh, no. Um, that's kind of my philosophy on it too. Like Hodges is, I feel safer at Hodges because I feel like they have a better grasp on like how serious this thing really is. Um, when I left Market Basket, um, it was still like they weren't doing too much like they still had like hand sanitizer and stuff out but in terms of like keeping our distance from the customers they didn't really do that mm -hmm. so I feel the same way as John until I know it's safe to go back and until everything starts to die down I probably won't go back to market basket for the time being yeah and I mean that's I think that's perfectly fine I would probably take the same precaution too just because there's so many people and there's you know so much heck or like I don't know what to describe it as but it's just so hectic yeah. um that you never know who's coming in and out and if the virus may be there or not um so how do you think that this virus and the whole pandemic will affect the future of your workplace? Um, will the regulations that have come, will they stay? And how long do you think that will last? Ooh, okay. So as far as Market Basket goes, um, I think the future is there's going to be a lot more uh, kind of like short-term employees. Um, so like when some people kind of just dip like me, um, they're gonna to try to get more people to come in and work uh, some shifts, but I don't know if they'll be like permanent employment or like at least semi-permanent part-time workers. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what they'll do as far as the bonus situation. Um, for those of you who don't know, Market Basket is pretty generous with its bonuses um, to all employees, like part-time and full-time alike. And um, I remember in like late March, early April, um, bonuses were handed out to employees who had worked during the situation. Um, I'm curious to see if they're gonna continue that, if they're gonna increase those bonuses, if they're gonna give some kind of hazard pay. Um, it'd actually be wonderful if they would take up a hazard pay kind of situation, but who can really mm. say? They're definitely getting more revenue than they would have under normal circumstances. So it, it could potentially be affordable, but there's also a lot that goes into managing the cash flow of a supermarket. It's not just, ah, you're, you're making more money than usual. It's also harder to get those products that they need and trying to get those hours to people who need them. Um, and as far as the safety precautions and all that, um, the way I see it, those are going to kind of fluctuate as the season changes. So maybe in the summer restrictions might ease a little bit. And then as you get towards like post Thanksgiving, uh, things are going to kind of ramp up again, where you're going to have limits. Um, and the plexiglass is probably going to stay just because it's going to be a pain to remove it and then put it back up later. <laughs> um, and yeah, so probably until this is kind of over as far as like it, it becomes that new normal. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, for Josh, when do you think that you'll be able to have that face-to-face -face con uh, connection with customers again? Um, I don't know. 
it's really tough to say because we still we're not super positive on the track that this whole thing is going to take um it could come back next year we don't know if it if it's shown that it's going to come back it, we might not have it at all this season mm -hmm. um but i don't know i'm hopeful yeah you know it's always good to remain hopeful um and what are your both of your opinions on how your workplace or other workplaces are handling this whole pandemic could they do anything better and if so what would you think that would be so i have a lot of opinions here <laughs> um I'll, I'll start off with like uh, i'll do like a time scale of opinions i guess i'll try to keep it brief as well um so as far as the beginning of this whole thing right that that friday morning when i came into work and all the subsequent days like they seriously market basket could have done a much uh better job as far as caring about its employees during that situation uh wearing the mask and all that like my store manager was not pleased about that at all um there was also uh, a uh, meat department uh clerk who was also yelled at by the store manager uh, because th this worker w had like a bandana and the manager's concern was, oh, but what if the customers are worried? It's like, we're in a pandemic. Like, if you're not worried, what are you <laughs> like? And so I, I think there shouldn't have been a stigma against employees wanting to protect themselves. And that really was off-putting to me. Um, there was also like some stigma um, amongst employees um, um, whether or not they had uh, management positions. Um, like my assistant manager um, was, saw me wearing the mask and he kind of made fun of it at first. And then like things started ramping up and then a week or two later, he saw him come in with a mask and then everyone started having to wear masks. Not to pull like a, I told you so type thing, but like the Willis Market Basket, I told you so. Like yeah. you guys should have seen this coming from a mile away and it's it is really frustrating to see that this company who historically really does care about its employees they kind of pulled this and i feel like in the future you gotta listen to what your employees need for their own safety and as far as i know anyway there's not really a mass uh distribution of masks to employees um i saw my manager yesterday he just had like a homemade cloth mask and so I, i'm really really hoping that in the coming weeks, coming months, that they get their act together and they really start putting their employees first, even putting their younger employees first. I know my little brother also works at the front end, he's 14, and they're calling him like every other day trying to get him to work. It's like, that's a little, like, he's 14, dude. You don't want him getting sick just so you can get a few hours in from him. Like, that's just a little, a, a little much. And I feel like we have to understand this is a pandemic for which we don't have a super effective treatment for. This isn't normal and we can't pretend that it is, but we have to understand that we can get through this as long as we actually work together and we try to work for the health and safety of all. Um, and so honestly, th those, the next steps that they make are going to be crucial not only for employees, but for customers. If employees get sick, you know, one employee comes into contact with how many food items, with how many customers, how many customers come in contact with other employees and other customers. Um, you know, social distancing exists, you know, six feet and whatnot, but that's not a solid wall stopping you from getting sick. That's just six feet of air. Um, so I, I think whatever moves they make next are going to be crucial absolutely crucial. I definitely agree with that. And especially in a place where not everybody might be able to get tested or for testing. It's very dangerous, I think. Absolutely. Um, Josh, do you have anything to add? Um, as far as market asset goes, not really. I think John did a pretty good job of covering that. Um, for Hodges, they've been pretty good from the beginning about doing it. Um, so the first, we were open for a weekend and then we closed for two weeks. Um, that first weekend, we still had like some contact with customers, like we would take orders through the window. Um, but that pretty quickly proved ineffective and it wasn't very good for the workflow. And in terms of safety, it wasn't super good for that either. Um, but after that little two week break we had where the current system was implemented, 
Um, they've been doing a very good job since then. And I feel like it's kind of sad that a small little ice cream stand with like maybe a hundred or a hundred to three hundred customers a day um, is doing a better job than a multi-billion dollar company with thousands of customers going through a day. Definitely, yeah. Um, so do you guys have any last words or things that you want to express maybe to a senior, to anybody else out there? Sure. Um, to everyone who is a student, be it college or high school student, who is still working at Market Basket, um, you guys are amazing. Like you're probably in a situation where if you don't work, things aren't going to work out too well for you. And I'm fortunate enough, you know, honestly, where I, I can afford to not work. Um, and so to all of you who are still working, thank you. Um, to all the healthcare providers and all of our um, healthcare staff, um, you guys are amazing. Um, honestly, I can only imagine the, the kind of resilience and strength that you have to go into the workplace every day and put yourself in more danger than I could have faced in just a supermarket. Um, and, you know, hopefully one day we can just do more than just say thank you to all these wonderful people. They, they really deserve just all the good things in this world. Um, and yeah, just, just don't, everyone look out for each other. Like dark days are ahead, but together we can make it to the light. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And um, I also would like to thank all of the essential workers and everybody like that um, who are keeping the world running because without you guys, I don't know where this world would be. So, Yeah, I also want to thank all those people, especially like nurses or someone who's putting in all, all of their time to keep us all safe, especially those who are sick. Um, also to any like school administrators um who are trying to push things along for people who are trying to graduate or trying to keep going through grade school i think they're doing a fairly good job as well so yeah definitely i touched upon this a little bit with um emily in my last episode but everything they are doing for us um is definitely new and something that i think all of us are appreciating even though it's super tough to keep a connection as a student body and with all of the teachers and stuff but I think overall, it's just one big thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's just about it. Um, thank you guys both for coming onto the show. And thank you for everybody watching. I love, um, I'm very appreciative of the support. Um, you can find a clip of this uh, interview on the YouTube as we're streaming live right now. Um, so also broadcast live on Amesbury uh, CTV tomorrow on channel 18, as well as their live stream. And this will also be um, put as an audio clip on the Port Media SoundCloud. Um, I know that John and Josh are also, we are also trying to get a show going, a radio show going called Noteworthy um, before this whole pandemic hit. So hopefully um, if things start to slow down a little bit, we can get that going and you can stay tuned for that. But otherwise, I think that's just it. So um, thank you so much again, and I will see you next week. Bye.